Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' systems and make that two systems actually because we got two systems from the user Emerald Neo today to check out so a massive thank you to him for sending these in but without further ado let's get straight into this so the first system let me just see here because I think I need to do them in a specific order so there's two so we need to check out a system called Paxa Taurus. Let's go ahead and check that out. So, where are we? Paxa Taurus system. Here we go. Okay, so what do we got? Okay, we've got some reading. A lot of reading. Right. So, the Paxa Taurus system is located at 1,200 light years from Earth and is a home to a race of intelligent aliens on the moon of uh, Coltaran. Okay, so the star itself, though. So, if we look here. A little bigger than the sun in most stats, so there you go, okay. So, blank planet. So, ooh, oh, a gas giant of an atmosphere, eh? Oh, interesting, let me see, is there like a hidden planet in here? There's definitely a hidden rocky planet in there somewhere, I reckon. <laughs> cool. Let's actually have a look, just for curiosity's sake. Ah! Uh -huh. So this is actually the planet called Anthem. Obviously, you've got an atmosphere on top of it as well, so. There you go. Uh, pull it back the way it was. So, we can't play this simulation for obvious reasons, but there it is. So, this is actually Anthem, so there you go. It's always nice to see. I, I just wish you could do this normally without having to add um, an atmosphere on like that. Because, I mean, it looks just so, looks, looks so good. So, an orange gas giant. That is made up of a distinct mix of radon near its core and a thin layer of helium and oxygen above it. It also has a large ring due to the collision that also created its dark moon of this one here. So, Desolate. Cool. There you go. So, first of the planets. Next up, we've got Tajar. A green, swampy world. Even though its atmosphere and surface is composed of mainly toxic materials, many species of simpler unicellular organisms occupy the surface. The planet has one small moon orbiting it. Excellent. And there's the Wonder Moon there, okay. Very small little thing there, okay. Alright, what's we got next? So next up we got uh, this one. It's another one of those blank planets, but it's another gas giant with an atmosphere on it, okay. Looking good. So, Escara, uh, a teal gas giant. This cloudy world is believed to have oceans of liquid night. Nitrous oxide beneath the clouds of nitrogen and hydrogen. This innermost moon of um, Sali has an unstable core and is very volcanically active, which is this object here. So there it is. Okay. Um, okay. The moon of uh, Kaltara is an arid world of large savannas and dotted small lakes. That looks quite nice, actually. Cool. This moon is also home to the intelligent species, the Kaltarans. The outermost moon. Uh, by these, it's a dusty world with small ice caps and a thin atmosphere. Nice. That's a nice little set of moons there around that gas chain, actually. Looking good. So there they are. Very, very cool indeed. Okay, next up we've got Latia over here. A cratered world consisting of rocky plains and icy peaks. The poles of this planet are known to be very mountainous with frozen peaks more than 60 kilometers tall. The planet has many craters on it from the formation of its rocky moon to Paros. Or Paros. So there it is there. Looking good. And next up we've got Highland. So where are we? So we're heading here, I'm guessing. So another gas world. A large gas giant made mostly of helium and ammonia hydroxide. This planet seems to have violent storms and winds speeds more than 1500 kilometers an hour. The innermost moon of Ravel is an icy cratered Wait, so is it called Highland or Ravel? Um, oh, there's Ravel there. Oh, so this is the innermost moon. Okay, gotcha. So, it's an icy cratered world which is believed to have formed from a ring that once exists around Highland. The second moon, Arkham, is a rocky world of orange mineral deposits. So, the orbits look a little messed up here. Um, okay, there it is. Orange mineral deposits around its surface. The outermost moon of Anshar is a salty world of large lakes of water on its surface. Um, the salt keeps the water from freezing and gives the oceans a salinity of over 50%. Nice. There you go. Cool. 
test those guys. Not sure why their orbits are a little funny, but there they are. I mean, maybe if we can just fix them quickly, let's see if that works. Does that work? No, it doesn't. Oh, that's a bit weird. Okay, well, there they are nonetheless. Okay, next up we got this one. Farago, an icy dwarf planet. Not much more is known about its surface, however, some people have speculated there may be cryovolcanic activity on the surface um, of Fargo or of the innermost moon of uh, Ercrest here. They are very close. Got a Pluto and Charon kind of look going on here. Okay. Because these worlds look alike. It is also commonly believed that they were once part of an ancient super Earth. The outermost moon of Curious is just a captured asteroid. So that's that object there. So not much going on over here. Okay, next up we've got this one. So, Litiru, another ice giant composing more than 88% nitrogen, giving it a deep blue colour. Well, so you can see the atmosphere on top of it as well, looking pretty cool. Okay. The planet also has a ring around it caused by the destruction of its innermost moon due to the Roosh limit. Its current innermost moon of Ujos is another icy world with deep blue basms here. Okay. Uh, deep blue basms believed to be composed of frozen nitrous oxide. The outermost moon of Oshore has a thick atmosphere and makes a methane. Cool. And that's the other one, Oshore, over here, I should say. So there it is. Cool. Makes a methane there. And then lastly, we got Crystal, just an icy rock. It does have a thin ring and a small orb in it, but other than it's pretty unremarkable. So the last object in the system there. Got the ring pretty far away from the star now. Let's have a look at its stats there. So 146 years our way. Okay, 30 AU. So it's roughly a Neptune distance. So there you go. Cool. And that is all of those guys. So that is the first of uh, Emerald Neo systems we're checking out today. So there's the lineup of them all. Um, also, you can see the atmospheres are separated from the gas giants now. So that's what the gas giants look like underneath their atmospheres. So pretty cool. You can see which atmosphere goes with which planet as well, which is pretty cool. So there they all are there. Very nice indeed. Cool. I see Highland's the biggest of the planets there. Okay, awesome stuff. So there we go. All right, moving on to the second of his systems now. So now we're checking out the Nahala system. So let's see what he has got for us here. So Nahala system, here we are. Okay. Right. This solar system has potentially habitable planets around a sun-like star and is located 1.3 light years from the previously discovered Paxatara system. The Kalaturans will eventually travel to and colonize this system in the near future. Okay, cool. Is it in the same simulation as the other one, maybe? No? What is it? Because you can see there's a lot of trails going all over the place. Okay, well, there it is. All right. Cool. Nice. So this is the Nahala system updated. All right, so, where are we? Um, oh, yeah, there wasn't any descriptions, was there? Let's just open it again just to double check, but there wasn't any, was there? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, so there was no descriptions. Okay, so we're free to explore this as we so wish. So, Nahala. So, a little smaller than the previous star, less luminous as well. Okie dokie. Then we have Vulcan over here. So, quite a popular name for you guys use, isn't it? The Vulcan rocky planet. So, there it is. Okay, and we have Vanilla over here, so we've got a Venus-like world, okay, 27 degrees, so it's nowhere near as hot as a Venus, so there it is there, okay. And next up we've got another gas giant, I'm assuming, oh that's a moon, no, no, so the gas giant's here, okay, so another greenish gas giant there. We need gas giants of atmospheres. I'm surprised they haven't added that yet, because, you know, that, that would just look so cool. Because obviously you could add um, clouds and stuff to it as well, for instance, that clouds, you could throw that. Look, that would look so good. You could have, like, storm gas giants and things. I mean, you could do anything. Storm, look. That look fantastic on gas giants. Yeah, that looks so cool. Um, but there we go. So there's the moons. So first the moons here. So that would probably be where the uh, people from the other system would travel to, is to colonise that. Got this moon here. And you got this one over here. It's pretty far out. Alright. Then next up we have got Laxon over here. Okay, here it is. Cool. Looking good. Okay, then we have another blank planet. So 
So it seems those two planets in one space upsets the moon orbits a lot. That's probably why they would look pretty weird. There goes some more purple shaded one there. It's got a lot of moons. So we just could go click through all of those. So they look pretty bog standard though, all these moons. So there they all are there. Yeah, all they all look like random generated ones. So yeah, okay. Cool. That's all of those. Next up we've got Crew Bell over here. Uh, pretty default looking world as well. It's got one moon on it. A little asteroid moon there. Okay. Cool. Now moving further up. Second to the last objects, we've got car over here. So I've got it's, uh, obviously an asteroid with a ring system, and it's even got its own little moon as well. Hey, nice. And I think lastly, we have got, still scrolling out, this one here. Brown Dwarf, hey, nice. Cool. There they are. I wonder what a Brown Dwarf would look like with an atmosphere on top of it. <laughs> quite cool. We'll have to try that in a sec, actually. And then it has one moon, or one planet, I should say, around it. If you're counting this as the star, this would be a planet. So, there you are. Okay, so that's the full system. But yeah, I want to quickly check back at that um, over here. So if I select, try and select the gas giant itself... That may be a little hard to do. <laughs> Fit there. Select select the gas giant. And then increase the gas giant's temperature to I don't know, a thousand. And then put the atmosphere back on. How how would it look with that? Ah, that looks quite cool actually. Get a cool sort of green look to the glow. Yeah, that's quite cool. Hey. But yeah, there we are, guys. That is this system done as well. So yeah, again, massive thank you to everyone near for sending this system in. I'll see that's not actually going to be that hot. So there you go. Yeah, massive thank you to everyone near for sending both of these in. And yeah, if you enjoyed this system, make sure to push that like button. Let's see if we can go for 50 likes on today's video as well, guys. And yeah, also subscribe if you haven't already. Helps on the journey to 30,000 subscribers as we are getting nearer and nearer by the day. We're less than 1,000 subscribers away now. So if you haven't already, definitely make sure and push that button. Help us on the road to 30,000. But yeah, guys, with that all said and done, make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.